Hey, aloha. Welcome back to this special edition of Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of people, events, and organizations doing good in our city, state, and world. It's my great pleasure to have two special guests here today. Uh, our, our title is SGM Services Directory, and we have Tai Bradshaw Lang from the Hawaii Department of Health SGM Workgroup and Skylar Smella. The hope from the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce, who is a board member there. Um, this is an interesting show. This is our, you know, we have a, a special emphasis on uh, LGBTQIA2 S plus issues, or maybe we call them SOGI or SGM issues. It's a lot of acronyms to unpack, but uh, welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. So, this was really interesting for me to have. Um, I didn't know about this, this directory that's come out. Tell us, if you would, Ty, what is the SGM services directory? Uh, well, you can think of it kind of as an opt-in phone book. SGM um, stands for sexual and gender minority. And it's the term that um, a lot of governmental agencies are adopting because it is incredibly, incredibly broad. The um, sexual and gender minorities is, you know, basically anybody who's not a majority. And what research has shown is that being a minority of any kind is much more stressful for any individual than being part of a majority. And part of that is manifested in having more difficulty accessing business services, accessing medical services. Um, as part of my work um, at UH, I did some interviews with community members. And one of the gentlemen that I interviewed said that he had put off medical care because of the office staff. He said that he had a really good doctor and he really liked them, but he didn't know who he was going to get on the phone. He didn't know if the person that answered the phone was going to act with identity affirming communication. And that can be very hampering. So the idea of the services directory is anyone who would like to be listed. Um, it's basically just saying, I'm going to try. Like, let's figure this out. You know, not having equal access really sucks. Let's all work on this problem together. Now, so, and this, this directory is put out by the Department of Health of the state of Hawaii. Is that right? Right. Yes. So um, the first edition is coming out in January. And hopefully will be updated several times a year and it's going to be hosted on the Department of Health Resource Hub, um, which personally you know, is a program that like I'm super excited about. Um, Hawaii has, when it comes to sexual and gender minorities, has often really been in the forefront. And this is a great example of that. I don't know of any other department in any state that is tackling things in this way that you know the community said hey this is a resource we needed and the department of health said okay let's make it that's it's a wonderful testament to our state and uh its progressive nature and also just acknowledging reality um uh, which is you know been in short supply i think um especially the last four years can you it's, it's can you um intended primarily for medical services provider or providers or is it for general services providers or, or how is it, how does it fit into the whole scheme of things so it first started the the initial scope um, was pretty narrow just medical providers 
and that is who we have the most listings for currently. But um, there were some other interested parties and, you know, we kind of realized like, why not? Why not include everybody? So uh, we have a medical providers uh, section and like a businesses section, which is, you know, kind of like everything else. And um, so pretty much anybody who offers any kind of service um, is welcome to, to have a listing in our SGM services directory. Okay, but the focus is primarily on finding, is, is it in the Department of Health? Uh, is, that, is that true to say? Um, well, so the, the resource hub um, is under the um, harm reduction branch of the resource hub. And so the, the viewpoint is that providing resources for the SGM community is harm reduction. So any resources, uh, which is, I would say the Department of Health is definitely why it started as provider focused, but I mean, ultimately we would like our scope to be as broad as possible. Okay, and, and I see, so you're asking people to opt in to identify themselves as providers or, or uh, self-identified members of the community or certainly allies that are willing to try to come up and say, I'm willing to meet your needs where you're at for who you are, um, whatever you, whatever, however you term or I, yourself or identify. And so let's get into that a little bit because I noticed that next to our names, we've got some pronouns and uh, we've got, I have he, him next to mine and uh, Ty and Skylar, you have they, them. Skyla, can you talk about that a little bit? What, what is with uh, they, them, and, and, and what is pronoun usage, and why does that matter? Yeah, thank you. That's a really great question. Uh, in many different countries and with different languages, pronouns that are gendered, such as he, him, and she, her, are non-existent. There isn't a gendered pronoun. It's the same one for men, women, and people who don't fit into those two binary categories. Of course, there's always been people who don't fit quite neatly into those two boxes. And in recent years, especially in the last 20 years, but really since the 20th century, there's been more and more organizing for the people who, who don't quite fit into he or she. Um, I myself am non-binary. That means that I'm not a man, nor am I a woman. I was born AFAB, that means assigned female at birth. But while I don't want to transition, that would be a trans man, I also don't feel like the term woman really applies to me and my identity. And that's the reason why I use they, them pronouns. There are a lot of other gender neutral pronouns out there. There's Z, there's A, uh, and a whole slew more. But the most common one for people who are non-binary is they, them, theirs. They, them, theirs. So instead of uh, saying uh, Mark uh, loves strawberries, he goes to the store and buys his strawberries. We would say Mark loves strawberries. They go to the store and they buy strawberries using they as a singular pronoun. That's right. They buy their strawberries. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a, you, you know, linguistic uh, twist for people to take some getting used to. But like any, any new idea, I remember in the olden days when Ms. Magazine came out, this was a radical idea that, that, that women could not be Miss or Mrs., but it was Ms. Now we take this pretty much for granted. And we do use they right now all the time. We just don't know it. Um, like we say, um, a, 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 um, a kind person is someone uh, who, pay, or a good person, a citizen is someone who pays their taxes on mm -hmm. time. So we're using that anyway, instead of saying his taxes or his or her taxes, we just defaulted to they sort of naturally over the last 30 or 40 years. Do you imagine that younger people are going to adopt they and them and theirs as gender neutral pronouns throughout society? Or do you think this will remain a province of uh, uh, sexual and gender minorities? Well, I think it's already giving huge inroads into society at large. I mean, if you think about the internet, especially now with quarantine, we're all interacting online. 
And if you just have a username, you don't necessarily have a face or a voice, then gender and, and the usual gender markers that we would use to tell if you should use he or she, they're flying out the window. Uh, especially as we get more into virtual reality, the, I guess, relevance of using gendered pronouns as well as gendered uh, salutations, you know, sir or ma'am, I think that's going to change a lot. And I think what the younger generation already has. Another thing that Hawaii has done, uh, not to toot Hawaii's horn, but uh, we were one of the first states to get a gender neutral driver's license. That means you can get a driver's license. Well, instead of M or F, you can have X. Okay. And that's very important for a lot of things because having to show your identification, especially if you don't necessarily look like the gender that is on your ID card, this can have issues stemming anywhere from uncomfort to possibly being in danger by being outed. So it's a really wonderful thing for gender non-conforming, non-binary people to have that legal recognition on your driver's license that you are neither male nor female. And, and, and go ahead, Ty. And um, just to kind of add on to that, um, something that I just learned earlier today in um, the workgroup quarterly meeting, um, there was work that unfortunately, because the Hawaii legislature uh, was dismissed early because of COVID, didn't go anywhere this year, um, but there is something in the works to have IDs that um, have no gender markers. Just get rid of it altogether. Right, because what is the relevance in this day and age, unless it is a medical emergency, perhaps then you might need to know, but other than your health provider, who really needs to know what you have in your pants, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's our argument that we've been making for a long time, or what you're, what you're doing is a consenting adult as well. I, I, this is on the forefront of, uh, you know, in the olden days when it was just gay and lesbian, and then we had gay and lesbian and trans, and people were trying to wrap their mind around that. And then, of course, inside of each of these terminologies, we have internal references and external references. So it's okay to say certain things if you're inside the group, but it's not okay for you to say that if you're outside the group. And I think that's also true with minorities, but especially inside of this community. And we, and, and so while I bring up the pro, pronoun usage, I think it strikes at the heart of the matter of what we're trying to do here is create some awareness and respect for people for who they are, regardless of their identity or expression or orientation. And when we have something as, as seemingly simple as pronoun usage next to our name, I think that really brings a lot of awareness. And I've seen a lot of conferences lately move to this format where they have this. And, and other folks I've seen will use um, she, they, or he, they, if, if they're comfortable uh, with um, maybe a, a dual designation and not, not uh, riled by that. But, you know, just like in the trans community, if, if someone is a trans uh, feminine and they're, they're this uh, pronoun and called him or, or, or his, it's very disrespectful and rude because you're not acknowledging that. So I think is the easiest way just to ask someone, what pronouns do you prefer? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, I think many people find it a little bit nerve wracking at first to introduce themselves, say their pronouns and ask for other people's pronouns. But whenever somebody does that, when I'm meeting them for the first time, I immediately feel this huge sense of relief because not only is that normalizing for me, um, it's also so such a good sign that that person, if not is, if not being already very aware of LGBTQ issues is trying. And that goes really far in making a safe space for people who are not the majority when it comes to sexuality or when it comes to gender. 
Now, we, uh, the show does have a Q&A portion. We did get a question from a viewer who says, I get very uncomfortable when waiters assume I'm, a, I'm female, but I get told that I can't expect a stranger to know my gender, gender from a five-minute interaction. Is there a way around this, or am I being too sensitive? Well, I would definitely say you're not being too sensitive. I think that uh, there's a lot of ways that we as a society can change those expectations as far as whether this waiter needs to use gendered pronouns at all. Uh, before, and even now, many people think using sir or ma'am is a way of showing respect. But is it really respectful to assume what's going on on someone's body without even meeting them for the first time? I think that as we go forward in society and get more knowledge on non-binary intersex identities, we're going to realize that there needs to be a change that's wider than the individual level. But on the individual level, we can still do our part to not assume, to always check, or to just use gender neutral they, them for people unless told otherwise. Is, uh, is there, do we have any good uh, substitutes right now or alternatives for ma'am or sir when we're trying to get someone's attention in public that's non-binary? We have to, I, I realize we're like making new vocabulary in mm -hmm. the, to cover this and new terminology to help us describe what exists when it's not oh, exactly yeah. specific. And there may not be an answer. I'm just uh, uh, curious about that. Well, I always use, hey, my dear, or hey, friend. Do you, Ty, do you have any uh, terms that you usually use? Gendered language doesn't normally occur to me. So when I'm trying to get someone's attention in public, I usually go with escalating volume of, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. So you leave off the sir or the ma'am and just excuse me. Okay, I, I love the friend or uh, what was the other one that you said, Skylar? Uh, pardon me, my dear. My uh, dear or friend, okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you mentioned, Ty, earlier that there's some health disparities that the sexual and gender minority community um, face. And there's an excellent report on the website of the state the last one I saw there was 2018, which you may have had some hand in creating the Hawaii's SGM health report. And it talks about issues like how many, how many meals you have, uh, you know, incidents of uh, things that we just take for granted as a, as a normal community that's not as a minority community. Can you speak to some of these disparities that this directory is hopefully will, um, will let us overcome? Yeah, those disparities were actually part of the reason um, that we decided to widen the scope um, because in, in the Manslow's hierarchy of need, having a safe place to sleep, having food, having water, having you know shade when the sun is beating down on you, those are things that frankly, are, are more important than medical care. Medical care is really important, but knowing where your next meal is going to come from is more important than going to the dentist twice a year. And hopefully um, the services directory, so we're, we're working with Google right now to um, have kind of a, map that'll be embedded in the resources directory, um, sorry, in the resource hub, so that people can scroll around and do it that way. And we're also going to have a PDF, um, which somebody could print and then have available offline for folks that don't have access to the internet. Um, and so the resource directory is going to bring together some really fabulous, um, like there's the trans funding project and just things that I had actually never heard of. Um, I've been really thrilled how stuff has kind of come out of the woodworks, you know, like, yes, we want to help. Um, 
And I think that's such a great energy. Um, intersectionality, when you have, you know, like when you have one status that puts you at risk for things and then you have another status that puts you at risk for things, that's intersectionality. And the risk, having intersectional status just multiplies your risk so much. And even me as someone who's, I thought of myself as pretty plugged in, um, there are so many resources that I was not available, I was not aware of. Um, you know, someone who, who has intersectional status that, you know, has really taken them down to the ground, like someone who is homeless, for instance, you know, who doesn't have access to these resources, they it would have much less of a chance of being aware of these services. And so we just, I am trying to get the information out there in as many ways as possible. I mean, honestly, if I could do like the, the pamphlet propaganda drop from World War II, I would, I would do that. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully this show will be part of it. And, you know, Hawaii is, I think, of being a liberal state that we're more accepting and also just traditional with, um, with classic Hawaiian culture, or that, I'm sorry, the native Hawaiian culture was flexible in uh, a lot of this, as well as like in Samoa with the Fa'afa Hine, Fa'afa Fine, I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong, or um, you know, other Polynesian cultures where you weren't, where there was a third gender and it was recognized and respected and still is with the, uh, the Mahu Wahine and Mahu Kane. So that is something where we already had it here. So we didn't have to import that idea. In fact, it's something where we can sort of base this upon and export it. Um, and that understanding along with um, adding in other cultures like the, the Hydra in India or the twin spirit in, um, you know, Native American culture. So it's not an either or, it may be a both and or something off to the side. Um, that helps a lot. I just, I'm thrilled that our state is sponsoring this. Now, I understand that then we, like you mentioned the dentists and, and it's because people who are sexual and gender minorities don't visit the dentist as often and find themselves at risk of being homeless, much greater percentage than those who are not members of a sexual or gender uh, minority. And that's what this directory resource hub is intended to uh, help combat. I, so Ty, again, give us some keywords that we could Google if we're just watching this and we wanted to find this hub, what would we Google? Um, so if you just Google uh, like Hawaii SGM resource hub or like Hawaii Department of Health resource hub, it should pop up. Okay. And you're launching in January of 2021. So, so the resource hub is already up. Okay. Um, we have training um, for medical providers and um, a lot of, a lot of people actually. Um, we have some, some training material for people so they can get CE credit um, because one of the often cited reasons that uh, medical providers and social workers and just the general public um, aren't comfortable with sexu sexual and gender minorities is because there's no exposure. It doesn't matter if your heart is in the right place if you have no knowledge, you, you don't know how to move forward. And you know, so exposure, you know, exposure is normalizing. And so we have a document that's got training material so that people can go in and get exposure and at the same time um, get continuing education that will count towards um, what they need for their licensure and so it's kind of like a double dip um, so they, it's training resource training education um, normalization on how to deal with the community meet the community where it's at mm-hmm and then the directory is coming out. Is it the directory then that will come out in Jan January? Yes. Yep. Okay. And how do people 
if they want to join that, they just go to the, the, the resource hub right now and there's forms on there where they can sign on. Is that correct? So the DOH put out a press release um, and it's the second, if you Google um, Hawaii Department of Health press release, right now it's the second press release on the page. Um, but it, you know, it has service directory in the title, so it's pretty easy to find. Okay. Um, and so the press release talks a little bit about the service directory, and it also has links um, for the medical provider listing form and for the business listing form. Mm -hmm. And so the medical provider is, you know, dentists, doctors, mental health, nurses, um, all that good stuff is medical, and then businesses is everything else. Yeah. Okay. And, and just I, I, to uh, add on to that, uh, yes. the Rainbow Chambers of Commerce also has a business directory. And you can check that out at HI Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. Uh, of course, medical, because there's a lot of lack of knowledge of LGBTQ, SOGI understanding in the medical community. I think that's so pressing, but also even if you want to go to ho a hotel with your partner and be respected or do something as mundane as go get your dog's nails trimmed and not have somebody raise their eyebrows at you, uh, that's really important too. And just our day-to-day -day life to support places that are open and affirming, and also to get that small micro progression in our day-to-day -day existence. So I definitely encourage businesses that are either LGBTQ plus owned or are interested in showing their support to sign up for both. Why not? Yeah, I, I think this is a classic example where we've got both and that, that we have this, this the resource hub from the Department of Health, which is a wonderful uh, government service that's being provided that's a model really for the rest of the states. And congratulations on that tie. And to, uh, I, I saw Bruce Anderson's name is there. I know he's since retired, but, and also to Skylar for the Hawaii Rainbow Chamber of Commerce. Certainly we, more is better as we overlap in these things and we, we cross-reference uh, each other's organizations and, and empower each other to find to find these resources, especially where, um, you know, the state may have more of a, a health emphasis that, that people might look to rather than a chamber of commerce because chamber of commerce is do different things and department of health do different. They can, fo the, the, fo the focuses are different, but the end result is that we're increasing awareness. We're increasing understanding and acceptance of the SGM community. Uh, there's a lot of information here to unpack that we just, barely are scratching the surface of. So I would um, really encourage people to, what we'll do is we will list um, some links in the uh, discussion below. So it'll, it'll be there on YouTube, but I, I, I saw our great friends at ThinkTech were putting out uh, flashes of what the website looks like now and some links there as well. But I encourage people, educate yourselves, understand, uh, Google SGM, what is SGM? How do I deal with this? I'm uh, really happy that you're both able to come on and, and just start this conversation. And I would love to continue this if we can in a couple of weeks, because there's a lot here that, like I said, we're just beginning to understand this as a community and society, how to talk about it, how to reference it, how to grasp the impact on people. So it's really um, an honor to have you both on here. And I just wanted to give you a chance to give some last thoughts um, about uh, anything that you like um, before we sign off today. So Ty, did you have anything that you wanted to share with folks we might have missed? I would like to address the question from our viewer. Um, that's something that I have struggled with also. And I correct people. I, I think there's definitely this concern of, you know, who needs to bear the discomfort? Do I need to bear the discomfort just all day, my whole life of being continually misgendered? Or is it appropriate for this five minute interaction for the other person to be a little uncomfortable and have the realization of, oh, I misgendered them. And I would say that is appropriate. 
um, because again, exposure is normalizing and also it's real world representation. You never know who's listening. You never know who needs to hear that. Okay, so just you're all about just normalize it when it happens and just be there. And it's and a teachable moments as they as they happen. Mm -hmm. As as much as I have bandwidth for. <laughs> yes, yes, as much as you have <laughs> exactly. Sometimes you may not feel teaching. So and and Skylar, do you have any last thoughts that you want wanted to leave people with? Yeah, I, I want to thank you, Winston, so much for having me on the show. Um, Ty, for all the amazing work you're doing with the Department of Health here and just creating this space where we can talk about it. I, I think most people are allies. They, they don't have a problem with any minority, but there's so little information. And a lot of that information is misinformation. So just having people on the show, having people in the medical field who are affirming, having businesses that are affirming, and having people who look different in those fields, you know, without saying a word, that's going to be a huge game changer. So I really appreciate both of you for what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. It's we're just coming out showing up and showing that we're just people too and we're doing the best we can and like you said most people are allies most people do want to support us they may not know how and it's shows like this it's it's uh, programs like the resource hub that the state has it's the rainbow chamber it's all of it together where we make a collective difference because as we move forward in the society it's not getting any less complex we just need to understand each other better so we can have the rich, full society that we all really want and, and deserve. And, but these needs are being met. As they become met better and better, we all benefit, um, whether we're members of this community or not. So thank you so much mm -hmm. for coming here today. And I look forward to continuing our conversation.